Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF mod video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at our GGF workstation build. Now we've had this done for a couple of months now. As you can see, it's in this enormous uh, Thermaltake W100. Now bear in mind, this is a W100 case that doesn't have the pedestal and it's not the W, uh, sorry, the double wide. So Thermaltake has a W200, which is essentially two of these uh, stuck together or it's one large case, but it represents two of these. And they've also got the WP, which the P stands for pedestal. You can buy as many pedestals as you want to put on the bottom or the top. So this is just a stock uh, W100, no pedestal, no double wide. And I can tell you, it's an absolute monster. You can see once fully filled, we've got about 15 hard drives in here. You can see my little custom made uh, Lazy Susan that I put my builds on. It's literally cranking it to the max. It's um, completely bent, this bit of wood, but this system, is a bit of a monster. I did say I have 15 hard drives. There's quite a lot of storage in here. So what I'll do is I'll run down uh, the specs for this build. As I did say, it is a workstation build. But in saying that, we didn't just want to leave it as a workstation build. We are running a uh, Asus Z10PD8 workstation build. Now this is a double socket, takes two Xeons. Now, I didn't want to have all this nice hardware in it and just run a cheap video card because everyone knows that Xeons are designed for workstation work that is great for VMs. Uh, video editing and things like that, but they can still run games all right. Like they're not gonna run it at your highest frames due to their uh, their core speeds, their clock speeds are quite low, but they will still play games all right. Now I do have two Xeons in here. They are the 2683V4s. I did get the ES ones. Now they are 16 cores, 32 threads each. So there's a total of 32 cores, 64 threads in this machine. Uh, they can work together in a dual socket board. Only Xeons will allow you to do that. You cannot put desktop uh, processors in here. So yeah, they are clocked at 2.2 uh, gig stock and I think turbo is 2.4. You have to remember that Xeons work a little bit different. They're all core turbo. You'll never get all the amount of cores in a CPU to all to turbo to their max turbo. So say you get a 16 core Xeon, all 16 cores will not turbo to like to what it says. You probably get two cores is their max turbo. It's just how the turbo uh, ratio works with Xeon, so just keep that in mind. So yeah, the max speed I get about this on this with all Xeons will be about 2.4. I can do some quite, so some slight overclocking. All I can do is the front side bus, I can get about, the stock is 100, I can get about 103. So for me, with a workstation, it's really not worth it. Uh, memory wise, I just bought some ECC off, um, off eBay. I think it came from Italy. That was by far the cheapest. It is crucial, it was brand new. Uh, being a board based on the Intel C612 chipset, it'll only take ECC. If you throw one of these Xeons in a workstation board, so say Asus's single socket workstation board, they got an X99 uh, WS, the single socket version, you can run ECC or non-ECC RAM because that doesn't utilize the C612 chipset. But because this is the C612 chipset, you will need to run uh, ECC, which I guess isn't too bad. It is a workstation. I do want it very stable. And this is clocked at 2133 megahertz. I got a 64 gig kit. It was found, for me, it was far cheaper to get four sticks of, um, of 16 gig each, so what that, yeah, that is 64, rather than getting uh, eight sticks of eight. Now you may see there's eight sticks in there. That's because four of those are dummy sticks. I wanted to make it look like it was all populated, because to me, the, the way that this board works, I would have had two complete areas uh, completely empty. Now the reason why this isn't a uh, crucial heat spreader is ADATA a long time ago sent me some gold uh, dummy RAM for some promo videos. They sent me eight sticks of the uh, of the dummy RAM. When it's dummy RAM, there's no ICs on. It's just BCB, uh, PCBs with the heat spreaders on. So they sent me that and I reused them for this build because I wanted to do a white and gold build. So four of those sticks are just the dummy sticks thrown back in just for aesthetics only to make it look like it's full. And then the other four sticks are the actual working ones. So I got 64 gig all up for that. Our memory card, uh, sorry, our video card is a GTX 980 Ti from Asus. I've got the bits power block and with all the rest of the water cooling in here, it is bits power stuff as well. Except for the radiator, I needed something that I could only, maximum room I could get was a 480 radiator in this case. Although it is an absolute monster, uh, most people probably don't utilize all the hard drive bays in here. So you can put a radiator at the front. I wanted to utilize all of this. So I needed a really good performing radiator to do, to do the two CPUs and the video card. So I opted with a AlphaCool Monster. Uh, 480. Now they're like 80 millimeters thick. They are absolutely huge, uh, thicker than this box. Uh, they perform really good. So I was restricted to one radiator. So that's why I went with that rad. And these CPUs, even rendering these CPUs stay at 30 degrees. I don't think I've seen the video card go over 35 degrees. Now that's um, that is Celsius. 
Now to me, that is uh, really good. Yeah, once again, Bits Power uh, water cooling, I said I've gone with the, uh, the gold. The, they call it true brass, but to me, it looks like, um, it looks like gold. Um, storage wise, I said earlier, I got a lot of storage. I think there's about 40 terabytes in here all up. Uh, WD um, reds, I think there's six T's. There's a lot of four T blacks as well um, for some of my performance arrays. And, um, and so on. For st other storage wise, I've got a, I actually ended up buying a Samsung 950 Pro NVMe. That is my boot drive. That thing absolutely flies. I think that clocks at about 2.3 gigabytes a second, which is insane. Um, ADATA also sponsored four of their other SSDs. They are the SP550s. Now they're pretty good SSDs. I've thrown them in RAID 0 for a scratch drive and they get something like um, 1700 megabytes a second. So that's really, um, that's really nice. And you're probably wondering how I managed to get all these hard drives and all these SATA drives in this system and working together. Now I do have a few RAID cards. Uh, another reason why I needed such a, such a beastie board was the, uh, the seven slots that this one comes with. Asus's workstation boards normally come with six or seven slots. I think I've nearly populated all of them bar the video card which will take up the double slot. So starting from, let's start from top to bottom. Um, sound card, I've thrown in the Asus STX2 uh, um, sound card. Because this is a workstation build, I needed uh, decent audio. My workstation uh, whole sort of area does have some all right monitor speakers. And also if I'm using headphones as well, it does have a good headphone amp out as well. Moving down, we have a 10 gigabit Intel network card. That is a dual Intel 10 gigabit network card because uh, doing a lot of the GGF LAN stuff, we do have 10 gigabit switches and it is handy copying to and from with a 10 gigabit connection. Uh, moving on to, uh, I've got an Asus Radar. That's another uh, PCIe SSD from Asus. They've been around for a while. Uh, that is, I think that's like a D drive for my applications for um, fast, e boot time, fast boot times for software. Moving down to the next two, I've got two LSI, which are now, uh, they're now called a Vario. 9268i RAID cards. Now, they're nothing fancy, they're just eight ports internal. Um, they're actually two by two um, mini SAS. Mini SAS, if you're familiar with mini SAS, you get one mini SAS in and it breaks out the four SATA. You can use SATA or SAS drives. So I've got two of those and they're just, I think, 512 meg of um, DDR2 or three, I think, on those, um, on those RAID cards. So they're not too bad. Uh, most of my RAIDs are in RAID zero because um, I don't believe in uh, redundant RAID arrays to me. I prefer to keep all my important data backed up somewhere else. Uh, you don't sort of create your RAID as, as your backup device. I think a RAID 5, if you only have RAID 5 and you want to call that your backup, well, that's not really backup. I like to keep all my, um, all my important data on a physical separate, uh, whether it's a NAS or other drive somewhere else, completely out of the way. But yeah, um, moving on to some of now the modding things I did in this build. As you can see, it's all white. Actually, I might actually take this cover off because it's probably um, probably getting in the way. Um, these do just clip off like this. I did get it fully custom powder coated. I normally do pack my own builds, but before a build like this, I wanted it all white. Um, the only issue is the guys who powder coated did stuff up with some of the panels. The front panel is a few shades darker than, than the rest of it. Um, I do need to take it back and get it redone. I wasn't very happy with that. Um, See, so yeah, I got it all white. I really love white cases. Moving on to some of the other areas. I, got, I made this... Uh, custom sort of PSU cover. All it is is two bits of um, opal acrylic, one uh, up and then one horizontal. Sort of added a brace in the back, glued them together. And then once again, I added some of my vinyl work. So you can see the render box is what I've called it. And this will light up RGB because I've got an RGB strip behind there. Also on the top bit, I added just a fancy, fancy little line. And then I put two little bits of um, Two little bits of round uh, vinyl before I painted it, painted it, and then took the took the vinyl off, and then that allowed me to peel that off. And you can also see the RGB through that as well. And I had to do a cutout for the pump and res sort of combo to go in there. Um, but yeah, also I added a full custom motherboard tray. As you can see on the back there, you can't see any grommets, uh, nothing at all. I do like to do that in a lot of my builds, and I did just add these little cover, uh, these little gold sort of cover bits just to neaten it up. And then once again, all my pass-throughs, you're probably familiar, a lot of my builds, I like to have all my, all my tubing go in horizontal vertically and then just go into the back and then the back is where all the tubes get connected. It just really cleans it up and sort of makes it really nice and neat and it really just adds a different aspect to a build. And so as you can see, all these are horizontal and then, um, and then they go into the back. Now bear in mind, if you are using Bits Power and you're using beefy cards, I really recommend um, purchasing some of the Bits Power stabilizers. All they are is a little bracket. You probably can't even see it. A little bracket that runs in here and all it does is stabilize your video card and it just adds extra support. 
because if I didn't have the support, this video card would be sagging. If the video card was sagging, it would cause these lines to be out of whack and it just wouldn't look right. So those little stabilizers, I think they're probably like 10 bucks from BitsPower. They work really, really well. All right, probably not too much more to, um, to cover. I'll turn it on in a tick. It's probably gonna be quite noisy. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thermal tape ring fans. The, these are the original, actually not RGB, yeah, they're just the standard ring fans. They are white. I didn't want to have a heap of RGB controllers and all that in this case. And I wanted to keep this sort of white and gold. So they're just the white ones. I got four at the front, four on the 480 rad, and then one at the back. Um, another thing I've done is I've added once again one of my screens. Uh, probably gonna get a heap of questions on um, on where I got this, how I did it. I used ADA64, which is a monitoring program, and then I use the custom uh, custom sensor panel to um, to theme it with the build. Um, I think I will do a video on um, purchasing those little screens and setting them up because I've literally had hundreds of messages about um, how to purchase them, how to set them up and things like that. I'll turn this on now. It, I think it's auto starts by itself. Um, nope, didn't this time. Sometimes it auto starts, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so that's it there. As you can see down there, the render box lights up. That's RGB, that's fans blowing in my face. Um, that's RGB at the moment, it's just blue because I thought blue looked the best. Um, we'll actually see if this screen, the screen should be priority one now because I don't have anything else plugged in. Being a workstation board, it does take a little bit longer. ECC, RAM, and Xeons. Who knows what it's doing uh, before boot, but it does a lot of stuff. And then it gives off a final beep to let you know that it's posted and it is ready to go. Uh, I'll probably cut this and wait till it goes in Windows because having uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven devices, I think I'm also using the, the two or three RAID cards on board. Uh, there's the beep, and I got the two RAID cards in here. It takes an absolute huge amount of time to boot because it goes through each RAID card. So what I'll do, as we'll stop this and we'll jump up and we'll just have a look once it's in Windows at the, um, the little panel that's up. Alrighty guys, so it's up and running now. It takes about three to four minutes to fully get up and going in Windows. There is quite a bit to do. Uh, it is up and going. You can see the, um, the thermal tape ring fans, the white does go nice and the case also comes stock with a, um, does come stock with the blue strip, but I have changed that to an RGB strip only to put it on the same controller as the render box logo down here. Just so when I change this one, it'll change the one at the front. Now I've also added an LED strip up the top here that runs on a separate controller. That pretty much allows me to change the interior lighting, which is here. At the moment, this is set to white. So I want this normally set to white and then I can change my RGB logo down there rather than if I have them all the same, you'd have to have this white, this white, and if you change this one, you're gonna have this one changed up here. Whereas I normally like to keep my interior lighting just to white only. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is what's powering this whole system. Um, without a doubt, I reckon C-Sonic uh, pretty much released some of the best PSUs around and I couldn't go past running a 1200 watt C-Sonic Platinum in this build. I probably don't need 1200 watt, um, only one video card. They will be your most power hungry uh, devices these days, but it's what I had on hand and I wanted the most highest quality in a system like this. So I had to go with the, uh, the C-Sonic. But yeah, apart from that, added the little strip along here. Uh, it's probably hard to see, but yeah, put a strip in here just so uh, you didn't see sort of the size of the fans. Added a few sponsor logos up there, nothing too fancy. And, um, and yeah, that was it. And I might just try and get a back shot of the system in there. And you can see the back of it there. Now I do have two ports here. Um, one of these goes into the RAID card. This will just shoot out an external mini SAS. This then connects via external mini SAS cable. And I do have a LSI storage shelf, which takes 12 hard drives. And I got that full with hard drives as well. I don't always have that on. That just gives me an extra expansion way to get 12 hard drives uh, connected to the system. Then you got a sound card, video card. And then you got the HDMI that just comes from the little screen in the, in the sort of front area. It just connects straight into the video card. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just want to thank all the sponsors uh, for supporting this build. A lot of the gear I already had from previous projects. I think um, ADATA was the, uh, the main sponsor to, um, to come to part of this one for the new uh, SSDs. But yeah, apart from that, I bought the SSD, had this board for a while from um, previous builds and the video card and whatnot. But yeah, I just want to thank the sponsors for um, supporting this build. Thanks for you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more videos in the future.